Hello, everybody. Today, we're going to finish out the week with a couple of polls. We've got Florida, but first, we're going to start in North Carolina. So let's get right into it. This poll is from Quinnipiac, and they sampled about 1,400 North Carolina registered voters from April 4th to the 8th. That's a margin of error of 2.6. So in the presidential race, Trump is at 48, Biden is at 46. That's a two-point advantage and clearly qualifies as a toss-up. It's a little bit narrower than we've seen from some other polls, but last time was also a close state. Biden has consolidated almost all the Democratic support. He's getting 95%, only losing 2% to Trump. Trump is doing almost the same, but slightly worse amongst Republicans. He's getting 94% and losing three to Biden. Independents break for Trump, 49 to 41. If we add in the third parties, then Trump loses 7 points, he goes down to 41. Biden loses 8 points, he goes down to 38. Kennedy pulls in 12%, and both Cornell West and Jill Stein pull in an impressive 3% each. So it's close, nobody at 50%. For the most part, we've seen Trump maintain an advantage in this state. On the four key issues, the economy and immigration, Trump is favored by double digits. With international conflicts, Trump has a six-point edge. Biden is up slightly with preserving democracy. He's at 49 to Trump's 45. So we've got the usual party breakdown with the key issues. Republicans more concerned about immigration and the economy. Democrats more concerned about preserving democracy. And then racial inequality, surprisingly, at 11%. Independents are tied 22% each on economy, immigration, and preserving democracy. Now, what about the governor's race? This might be the biggest race to watch. It's an open seat. We've had the primaries. And now Josh Stein has a notable eight-point lead, 52 to 44, for Mark Robinson. Stein gets 96% of Democrats, while Robinson, he's down a little bit. He's only getting 87% of Republicans. Independents also break for Stein, 52 to 43. In a four-way race, Stein goes down to 48, Robinson to 41. So it's still a comfortable seven-point advantage for Stein. Now, I don't think this race has really begun to heat up yet. I've thought Stein is going to be viewed as not really all that controversial. Mark Robinson has a lot of potential baggage. They could dig up old clips and old quotes and how he campaigns on the issues might alienate a small segment of voters in the middle. Now, he also fires up a lot of people, so he's capable of winning. But in this poll in April, Stein is the one with the lead. Down here, we've got all the personal traits. Stein comes off as more likable, relatable, and honest. Robinson has his work cut out for him. He's going to get presidential turnout, and it's unclear how he's going to be able to perform under pressure and under the national spotlight. After that, we've got some important issues for the governor's race, and it's kind of the same story as the national issues. Then we've got the approval ratings. Joe Biden is only at 38%, 60% unfavorable. Governor Roy Cooper, he's looking positive. He's at 51 to 39, and it does not look good in the U.S. Senate. Both Senators Ted Budd and Tom Tillis, they're at about a 30% approval rating. Budd is at 42 disapproved, Tillis at 49%. Then we've got the economy. 67% say it's not good or poor. Down here with abortion, 27% think it should be legal in all cases, 36% legal in most cases, 22% illegal in most cases, and 8% illegal in all cases. If you want to look at the cross tabs, you can scroll down even further. And as always, all the links will be down below in the description. But as far as this poll in North Carolina goes, Trump is apparently running 10 points ahead of Mark Robinson, the Republican nominee for governor. And considering Robinson is a lot like the same brand as Donald Trump, that seems like a big gap. Maybe people are still feeling out Robinson. We'll have to get into the summer and see if anything changes. So that's the Quinnipiac poll. Maybe you're not a big fan. Maybe you'll love it. I was going to take a look at their polling history on 538, but they didn't really do much back in 2022. In 2020, there was a clear underestimation of Republican support across most of the states they polled. If you just focus on North Carolina and go back to 2016, there they had Clinton winning the state by about two to three points. They underestimated Trump by about six. They do have a few hits, but there are a lot of this is, as with any poll, take it somewhat with a grain of salt. Before we move on, there was a second North Carolina poll that came out while I was finishing up this video. It's from High Point University, and I'm not going to go way into it, but of course, it's going to be down below in the description. But in that poll, for president, Trump leads by three over Biden, 45 to 42. So it's not way off from the Quinnipiac poll, but for governor, Josh Stein leads by a smaller margin of three points. This time, both candidates are in the 30s. Stein is at 37, Robinson. 34. There's a huge chunk of undecideds, 25%. So this time Stein is up by three. This seems more in line with what I was expecting, but feel free to look at this poll and take a look at the rest of the data. Now let's move on to Florida. We've got an Emerson poll and they poll the upcoming abortion amendment that's going to be on the ballot this November. That's something Democrats are more energized about thinking that it could boost their turnout in other races. So 
what is this poll showing us? Well, first of all, Trump is leading by 13 points in a head-to-head -head matchup against Biden. So as of right now, this state does not look competitive at all. And they did not expand it out to a three-way race. But they do cover the abortion amendment, and that will establish a constitutional right to abortion before fetal viability. 42% plan to vote yes in November. 32% unsure. 25 are voting no. 56% of Democrats and 44% of independents plan to vote in favor. That is actually surprising that Democrats are only at 56. I would have expected that to be much higher. With Republicans, 36% are going to vote no, 30 yes, and 34 are unsure. Now, for a constitutional amendment to pass in Florida, last I checked, it does have to pass with 60% of the vote. So this is going to take some more support for it to hit that target. Now, we've got some more abortion data. 57% find the six-week abortion ban that will become state law next month is too strict. 15% not strict enough, 28% about right. With the current 15-week ban, 43% say it's too strict, 21% not strict enough, and 36% about right. We've got a graph down here if that helps you visualize it, but it does seem like a six-week ban is generally viewed as too strict, even in red states. I always like to see voters decide as we increase the number of weeks at what point they would like restrictions. Generally, the higher you go or the later in the pregnancy you get, the support declines. Again, we've got the Biden-Trump matchup. If you push the leaners to make a choice, then Trump is at 56, Biden is at 44. Biden's job approval rating is at 36, 54 disapprove. Governor Ron DeSantis, his approval rating is positive. It's at 47, 42% disapprove. So DeSantis might have rebounded a little bit. His approval ratings might not ever get back to where they were prior to him running for president. But he's at a net five positive. He's got more time to rebrand himself and have voters forget that he ever even ran. And finally, we've got a U.S. Senate matchup. The likely candidates right now are Rick Scott for the Republicans and Debbie McCarcel Powell for the Democrats. Rick Scott is going for his second term. And in this matchup, he gets 45%. McCarcel Powell is at 38. Still 17% undecided. That's a good chunk. I've always thought Rick Scott is potentially vulnerable. I understand all the shifts in the state, but I think Democrats are still going to hit him hard on economic issues like Social Security and Medicare. Plus, if you throw abortion into the mix as well as that amendment on the ballot, I don't think Rick Scott is unbeatable, even considering the right word trend of the state. Of course, he's got the advantage, as we see here, seven points, and maybe he even goes up to 10. But right now, he's clearly running behind Trump. So we'll see what happens, but some good data here out of Florida and North Carolina. So let me know in the comments, what do you think about either of these polls? Do you buy the Quinnipiac poll in North Carolina showing Josh Stein with an eight-point lead? Is he really running 10 points ahead of Trump? And how about in Florida? What do you think about this abortion amendment? And is a seven-point lead for Rick Scott in April going to be good enough to win the election? Let me know down below on your way out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Join if you'd like to support the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.